say we're going to be talking some cricket now of course we've been talking a lot of cricket all morning it was a massive day yesterday for australia and someone who no doubt will be very happy about that is paul dennett australian cricket writer who's on the phone now morning paul morning rich and patrick how are you going good. yeah we're good thanks we're good i'm sure you're pretty good yes uh, after yesterday too yeah it was a wonderful day um the crowd in the holly stand were uh, initially silenced for a little while by by Steve Smith, which was quite remarkable. They got their voice later on, but as an Australian fan, um, it was one of the more special days and another exhausting day. It's amazing how much sitting around doing nothing for eight hours and four days in a row can, can tire one out, but in some ways as a neutral, today would be good if England really put up a fight and the Test match has been so good, it would, uh, it would deserve to have a, a, a climactic finish. Were you surprised at how the game drifted away from England yesterday? Yes, I was, because I think that a lot of Australians were fearing that there could be a flurry of quick wickets and that England could um, have a very manageable total. I mean, you've got to have sympathy for England. That It's being said often, but it needs to be said, of course, that without Jimmy Anderson, um, that's going to make any side um, find things difficult. And the pitch really was giving nothing to the quicks. And so it was then up to the spinners. And, I mean, Moen Ali's probably been my favourite England cricketer for several years now, but he just... Uh, as people have been saying, just seems to have uh, lost confidence. And unless he p probably um, puts together a bit of an innings today, he might find himself out of the side for Lords. Yeah, and, you know, obviously Jimmy Anderson's injury is, is what it is. We're not sure what his recovery time frame is at the minute. It's very unlikely that yeah, I would have thought that he'd certainly be in, the, uh, in for the next test. And the Moeen Ali's form, you've mentioned there, not particularly great. Is it time, maybe, that England did just, oh, quite ruthlessly, just go, right, you know what? Let's bring through another generation now. Because what, what I saw yesterday was something I'd not really seen for quite a long time in England, which was the total lack of ideas, I felt, and, and almost a sense of helplessness when we got to a certain point where it was like we'd exhausted all the options that we had at our disposal, and we were just ticking over and waiting for the Aussies to, you know, Aussies to declare. Is it time that we, we brought through a new generation? I think that that can happen, though. That, um, and I've seen it with Australia before, that when, when conditions are against you and, I mean, when you're up against batsmen like Smith and, and Wade, who came back into the side on the, on the back of an enormous 18 months where he's just been scoring runs everywhere and, by all accounts, batting in the nets, that he's second only to Smith at the moment in, for Australia, that on an unresponsive wicket, that can happen to sides. And if I was England, I'd still say, wait a minute, we went into this series, everyone's saying it's going to be very close. Um, we didn't um, have, a, have a great test match, but let's not throw things out just yet. And I'd be very reluctant to dispense with players like Moe and Ali, um, you know, for the long term before, before they're due. If you've got someone fantastic rising up through the ranks, then pick them. And I, I'd certainly be picking Sam Curran for the next test match, uh, but I wouldn't be making, you know, absolute out and out wholesale changes. Indeed. Uh, obviously, England's bowling was, was pretty poor yesterday. Um, you know, we're talking about moving forward and obviously the, uh, well, the issues they've got going into the next test. Regardless of what happens today, will Australia take huge heart from this first test? Well, they haven't won any form of cricket um, in Edgbaston since 2001. So if they win, then obviously they'll, they'll take great heart. If they don't win, if England get away with the draw, it could actually be that England take away some momentum. I mean, in... Um, 2009, England held on by one wicket at Cardiff, yeah. a game that Australia really should have won. Australia were, were the better side, but getting away with a draw like that, they did it again in 2010 and 11 in the first test at the Gabba and went on to win their only series in Australia for a long time. So, if Australia can't bowl England out today, uh, I think that England will take um, just as much momentum out of this game as Australia. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be a tricky one, really, for England. I don't really see how we are actually going to be able to uh, chase down 385. It does seem like uh, a bridge too far. But as, uh, in terms of the, the Australians' attitudes towards Steve Smith, in the wake of Sam Papergate, was he as unpopular in his own country as he was over here or, or there or thereabouts? And has he just been fully redeemed now? He was never as unpopular in Australia as he was in England because it was David Warner that was the one that was most unpopular in Australia. Oh, the right. feeling in Australia was that Smith um, was probably thrust into a, leader, a leadership position too young and maybe not with the right um, characteristics. The, the, the line that I've heard said is that, you know, beneath his boyish exterior was, you know, was masked a boyish interior. Mm. And that um, he should have been stronger to stop David Warner and Bancroft doing what they did and that was his greatest weakness in not doing that, but that in itself isn't anywhere near, near as bad as what they'd done. So his redemption is complete with probably 90% of people. The other 10% uh, in Australia, I don't think his redemption will ever be complete. Yeah. But I think for most people, it, it's a sense of joy with what he's now done. Um, 
If, say if the Aussies do win today, will they go with the same team at Lords? I think that they'd be uh, pro- possibly eager to rotate some of the fast bowlers. And they've never done this in the past. They've always just said, we pick our best 11 for a test match. We'll never rest anyone. But the, the, the schedule might demand that. So I think that there will be... Uh, when you've got Josh Hazelwood and Mitchell Stark waiting in the wings, that they could potentially um, bring one or, one or both of those in into the side, and not necessarily to drop one of the other quicks, but basically to rotate them out. Yeah, uh, well, absolutely. And you can't can't help but imagine that Nathan Lyon is going to have a, a huge role to play today on you know day five wicket with England needing to uh, be positive and be aggressive. He is, you would have thought, going to be the the, the key linchpin of uh, the, this Australian attack today. Yep, and today where he will come under quite a, quite a lot of pressure because we're all expecting that he's going to take a bag full of wickets. The cliche is that sometimes when the spinner is under that level of pressure that they don't quite perform. I think that um, he hasn't been quite at his best so far in this match. He's bowled some very good balls, but I think he's dropped a little bit too short uh, uh, a little bit too often and not necessarily being bowling absolute bad balls, but balls that the batsman can ease away on the back foot. So if he can get some accuracy today, then, yeah, he's, he's the one that's expected to bowl Australia to victory. Indeed. Uh, expect, uh, in, interest to see how you think today will go. I know that the ticket price has been reduced at Edgebaston, so expecting a decent crowd. I think it'll be a good crowd. I don't, I don't think it'll be a sellout. It's noticeable in the hotel this morning at breakfast. The last four days, it's just everyone is clearly going to the cricket, um, England fans and Australian fans. But today, suddenly, I thought, oh, I'm in a different hotel. It's sort of like a business crowd in, and am I, am I the only one still here? So there'll be um, still a lot of people turning up. But I, if I was an English fan, I suppose, I wouldn't be rushing to get a ticket or take a day off work to get a ticket for today unless I was um, a particularly loyal one. I think Australia's probably going to win, but um, the... The betting and the you know the predicting algorithms are kind of indicating it's going to be fifty fifty. Yeah, um, just you just mentioned there the fans and everything. We saw a fabulous display by the Barmy Army throughout this uh, throughout this cricket match. We've seen all sorts of stuff going on, including someone dressed fully as the Queen with a cricket World Cup, <laughs> um, and people dressed as the nineteen sixty six football World Cup winners. A plane flew overhead, a rise, Sir Ben Stokes. Uh, what's been your highlights? Have you been uh, seeing anything that we may have missed over there that's really kind of tickled you from the uh, from the supporters at the ground? I, I think I, mean, I love the sixty six World Cup squad, but my highlight was. Uh, there was a bloke yesterday dressed in full bridal outfit and right at the end of the day, I mean, everyone in the Holly stand was pretty focused on the cricket all day, even though they were <laughs> drinking plenty. Yeah. But maybe at the last 10 minutes that focus shifted and a little game of cricket broke out just in front of me in the middle of the stand, which uh, was amazing because in Australia they would have been kicked out straight away, but England allowed people to, you know, treat tri- people a bit, a bit more like adults. Oh, it's mayhem. This... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was still listening to Test Match Special. That's what I like so much. He still had the, the earpiece in as he was batting in full bridal outfit. <laughs> Fantastic. Brilliant. Paul, thank you very much. As always, Paul Dennett there, Australian cricket writer, given an Australian perspective.